Hello everyone, my name is Abhishek and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I will explain the real-time use cases difference between Terraform and Ansible. There are two primary reasons why I thought of making this video today. One is a lot of subscribers are asking, Abhishek, can I skip Terraform and only learn Ansible? Or can I skip Ansible and only learn Terraform? When should I use Terraform and when should I use Ansible in a real world scenarios? So one is I'll answer all of these questions. And two is we are going to start the Terraform Zero to Hero series from the coming Monday. That is 11th of September. I've already shared the agenda syllabus in the day zero video. If you haven't watched that, you can watch that video using the link in the description. So before starting that series, I thought I need to clear the air for some people who are confused between Ansible and Terraform. So watch this video till the end. I'm going to cover all the required information to make you understand when should you use Ansible and when should you use Terraform. Okay, let's start with the basics. What problem is Ansible solving and what problem is Terraform solving? Ansible solves the problem of configuration management, whereas Terraform solves the problem of infrastructure management by following the principles of infrastructure as code. What does that mean? Let's take an example. Let's say you have joined an organization and there are 100 virtual machines in that organization. 50 of them are Windows virtual machine. 50 of them are Linux virtual machines. And in Linux, you have combination of virtual machines. Some of them are Debian, some of them are CentOS, some of them are RHEL, some of them are Alpine. So if you write a script, you have to make sure that it works on Windows, it works on Linux, and in Linux, it works on different distributions. So that's the problem, right? If you have to write script for Windows, it has to be PowerShell scripting. And for Linux, if you have variety of distributions, the package manager keeps changing in each of the distribution. So either you need to use curl commands or you need to use some if condition and to identify the distribution and change the package manager. And to add that, you need to manage passwordless authentication between the servers in your scripting. So what Ansible said is don't worry about all of these things. Just tell me what is the DNS or IP address of all of your virtual machines. Just establish a passwordless authentication for one single time. And what I will do is write a playbook for me and irrespective of the virtual machine type, operating system type and distribution type, I will create resources or I will create the configuration on all of those virtual machines. If you want me to create some package, I can do that. If you want me to upgrade version of a package, I can do that. If you want to install any security updates, I can do that. So that is what Ansible does. Ansible solves problem of managing configuration in hundreds of servers. You don't have to bother about it once you configure Ansible and write the playbook. Now, similarly, Terraform solves a different problem which is related to infrastructure. For example, you have AWS, Azure, and OpenStack in your organization. Let's take an example. And you are given a task to create virtual machine on AWS, to create virtual machine on Azure, and to create 10 virtual machines on OpenStack. Let's say you have to create 10 virtual machines on all of them. So you might be thinking, Abhishek, I can simply do that. For AWS, I'll use cloud formation templates. For Azure, I'll use Azure Resource Manager. For OpenStack, I'll use OpenStack heat templates and I'll create these virtual machines. Now, not just virtual machines, I'll tell you to create VPC configuration and integrate it with storage. So again, you will say, okay, that's still fine. I'll go to AWS and uh, I'll update my cloud formation template. I'll update my Azure resource manager and OpenStack templates. Now, the problem is as a DevOps engineer or as someone joining your organization, they need to learn about three different things. Or in one organization, you learned AWS cloud formation templates. In another organization, if they are using resource manager, Azure resource manager, you need to learn that. In another organization, if they are using OpenStack heat templates, you have to learn that. So to solve this problem, what Terraform said is don't worry about all of these things. 
I can automate infrastructure or I can create resources on any of the cloud providers. It can be public cloud, private cloud. And to that matter of fact, I can also create on any SaaS provider if I get to interact with the APIs of that provider. If the provider has APIs, Terraform will connect to that provider APIs and Terraform will create resources on that provider. So if AWS has an APIs, what Terraform will do is Terraform will configure AWS as a provider. It will interact with the APIs of AWS and it will create resources on AWS. When I say it will create the developers of Terraform, what they have done, they have created providers. And when you write the provider name in the Terraform script or template, Terraform will understand that, okay, I need to talk to AWS for whatever things are written inside the Terraform templates, the HashiCorp Terraform templates, right? So this way, Terraform solves the problem of DevOps engineers or organizations switching from one provider to the other provider. They just need to learn Terraform because it works on the concept of infrastructure as code or the another concept called API as code, right? We will learn in detail when we start the Terraform course. Don't worry about that. We will learn in a much deeper way. We will learn with practical examples as well. But here I wanted to explain that configuration management is solved by Ansible. Infrastructure or resource creation management is solved by Terraform. Now, because these tools are mature now and these tools have been there in the market for a long period now, in some or the other way, they cross path with each other. That means in your organization, you might be using Terraform to create EC2 instance in AWS and you might go to Ansible documentation and you might be confused. Oh, I can do it with Ansible as well because even with Ansible, you can go to AWS and create an EC2 instance. Ansible has a EC2 module, but again, what you need to understand is the core strength of Ansible is configuration management. Core strength of Terraform is infrastructure automation or resource creation. Let's say tomorrow, if there is a new cloud provider or tomorrow, if there is a new uh, service in AWS, Terraform will be the first tool to automate or to integrate with that service. Terraform will launch the module first, even before Ansible, because it's the primary role of Terraform. In Terraform, you will find that module as soon as it is launched because a lot of community is using Terraform to create resources on AWS, to create resources on Azure. Whereas some contributor or Ansible might do that, but it will take more time or it might not consider it as priority because Ansible is designed for configuration management. When you are working in an organization, you always choose the best tools that is the best fit for your requirement. Right? So that's why if you are given a task, for example, to create a virtual machine with VPC configuration integrated with S3 bucket and in the virtual machine, you have to install MySQL database. So what you need to do is for creating the virtual machine, for creating the VPC to connecting to S3 bucket, use Terraform. Whereas for installing and configuring MySQL database, use Ansible. If someone comes to you and says that, oh, okay, you have created virtual machine with all this VPC configuration and S3 bucket. Now replicate it and create for 100 instances. So using Terraform, you will replicate it and you will increase the number of virtual machines, VPC configuration and S3 bucket. Using Ansible, you will talk to that 100 virtual machines and you will install the MySQL database. Let's say tomorrow, if they want to move from MySQL to any other configuration, they want to install Nginx web server. They want to install 100 packages in that virtual machines. Just go to your Ansible playbook, update your Ansible playbook and install all the packages in that virtual machines. Whereas if the requirement is to increase the number of EC2 instances, then use Terraform, right? So understand the primary difference, then it's not a difficult thing. Use Ansible only for configuration management. Use Terraform only for resource creation, infrastructure management, so that you don't have to cross the paths between Ansible and Terraform. So in any documentation or any task that you are doing, if you find someone using Ansible for 
infrastructure automation or someone using Terraform to create some packages, don't worry about it. These tools are capable of doing it, but they are not dedicated for doing that particular purpose. I hope this is clear to you and please follow the Terraform Zero to Hero series that we are going to start on Monday from 11th of September. We will discuss in depth about Terraform. There are different concepts in Terraform. We will cover that. I am already preparing the GitHub repository with all the things that are required so that from Monday, we don't have to deviate from the concept of Terraform. Thank you so much again for watching this video. And if you know someone who is trying to understand difference between Ansible and Terraform, please share this video with them. See you all in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.